Well, good morning. My name is Darren Osborne. I'm news editor for ABC Science Online. I'm Bernie Hobbs. I'm from the ABC Science Unit. I'm one of the many people who studied science, loved it, ended up being rubbish at it in the laboratory. So I had to go and work in the media where I've hardly done any damage at all. It's great to have you here this morning to meet three other young scientists who will hopefully give you a bit of inspiration. They're young, they're gorgeous, and they've been doing the most amazing things that they're going to tell you about. I didn't really know where to start today, so I thought I would start right back at the beginning. This is actually me as a very chubby three-year-old, um, being a mini biologist. So you can see me investigating the lizard there, and then on the right I'm having a look at a rock pool, which is actually still one of my favourite things to do. So. I wanted to show you these slides just to emphasise how important curiosity is in a science career. When I was at school, I was a total science nerd. Like, I love science. I love it. Um, I did everything. I did biology, I did chemistry, I did physics. Um, I did really well in these subjects. Um, but since, you know, I wanted to also say for this slide and hearing other people say it, I think one of the most important subjects you can do at school if you want to be a scientist is English. When I was about your age, I took an interest in science and so I did a Bachelor of Science and then after that I got a job for two years at CSIRO working in my father's lab. I love the beach, I love surfing, I love fishing, I love snorkeling and I thought I'll do marine biology. Several years ahead I now am a marine biologist or I like to refer to myself as a marine ecologist. So my research is trying to understand how we can make this important resource, the world seagrasses, more resilient to future change and how we can keep them uh, cranking away and capturing and storing that carbon. Now, I think I'd been delusional. I think I was in denial. I think I always wanted to be a scientist, but I was terrified of something. And it was this. It was mathematics and things like this awful quadratic formula. And whenever biologists put maths equations up in their presentations and science sessions and stuff, everyone groans just like you did. I wrote to the university and I'm like, can I please come and do a science degree even though I didn't do maths in the HSC, which was crazy of me. And they're like, sure, we think you can do it. So I guess the point I'm trying to make is if you're a creative person, um, you've probably got lots of unique skills that maybe some other scientists don't have, like communication skills or the ability to ask really unique questions. So I did an honours degree on locust swarming behaviour and here are some. It was really exciting. I got to go into the semi-arid interior, collect locusts and bring them back to the lab and look at them doing unusual things like this. I promise you that's not rude. That's just I'm, what they do. <laughs> I'm, that's rude. <laughs> They're all boys. They're not doing anything rude at oh, all. Oh yeah. That's, that's not rude. <laughs> it's not rude. Important point, I don't, don't do anything you don't want to do. I think, Peter, you know, we've said it here, you've got to be kind of passionate about what you want to do and love it. So then I went and did just a Bachelor of Science and um, I got to do great things like forensic osteology. But, you know, during my travels around the world, I'd always loved science museums. And I thought, oh, well, maybe I could be a science curator. And so I went back to uni and did a Masters of Museum Studies. Okay, so after I did honours, it took like six years for me to get all the way from high school with all that maths and chemistry to, my, to the end of my honours year. And uh, I managed to get myself this really awesome job looking after kiwi, which are of course the endangered birds in New Zealand, the native birds. So that was a really cool job. What could be more rewarding to do with your science degree than save an endangered species? But I sort of wanted to take it to the next level. I wanted to um, use science to help save animals. In particular, I'm really interested in looking at the diet we fed the kiwi. So the museum studies is like a one year course postgraduate after you do a science degree. Uh, and inside that course, you get to do these great internships. So I went and worked at the Australian Museum, cataloguing their butterfly collection. And then I went to the Powerhouse Museum. Loved all the um, exhibitions and the curators there were really helpful. And I was like, wow, I want to work here. And so I often get asked, what's it like being a marine ecologist? And I've got to say, it has got to be one of the best jobs on the planet. During the summer, I'm out in the water, snorkeling, driving boats. I get to travel the world. And we also get to meet some amazing people as well. Politicians, business leaders, eminent scientists. And finally, eventually, it led to a job. Uh, I, I couldn't believe it. I'm finally getting paid to be a science nerd. And that is actually uh, above one of the offices at work. Um, I'd found my home, my nerd home. <laughs> never, never again to be teased for being a science nerd. So yeah, it's not, 
it's not a uh, career that you might think of when you think of science, but it's, it's an amazing, amazing job to do. Um, and I just wanted to leave you with this slide, which I think kind of sums up a lot about what I do and maybe what scientists do in general. So thank you for listening. And that got me thinking a bit more. If I'm going to spend the next 40 years of my life, nine to five, five days a week doing something, why not make it something really that I'm passionate about, something that really gets me excited? And uh, last night, just as I was um, putting my daughter to bed, she said to me, I want to do what you do, Daddy. And uh, I asked her, what, what do you think I do? And she said, you fix things. And she was spot on there. We are problem solvers. And we're often solving problems that humans have created. Now, the good bit is that as good as we are at creating problems for ourselves, we're also quite good at fixing them if we really want to. What do you find you can do when you, it whiles away the hours? You know, like you're at home on the weekend. What is it you do that you love more, more than anything? Like, it might be playing a computer game or something, but what's that computer game about? What skills does it use? And if you focus on that, you might find your career path, I reckon. What you love, do what you love. Don't do what your parents want you to do. <laughs> That's very good advice. <laughs> Something a guy called Isaac Asimov once said is that the greatest phrase to hear in science is not Eureka, I've found it, it's gee, that's funny. And a lot of the best discoveries I've made in science is where I'm pulling my hair out after a year of hard work going, this doesn't work out as I'd expected it to work out, what is going on here? And then that has led me down a path that I could not have predicted. So, you know, if you're not getting the right answers in science, then maybe you're actually discovering something wonderful. You know, from my experience, the Bachelor of Science was just so great for me. Like, it gives you exposure to try so many different things, you know, and so, so many different things. I even, I did a bit of computer science, like, for a semester. I went and did religion, um, like, you know, Eastern religions and stuff. I did chemistry, did biology, did just so, so many. Like, it gives you a really, really great kind of way to find out what, what you're really interested in and what you're good at. So I'd recommend doing that.